Hi, I'm Simon K. Jones, and you're listening to the audio version of Tales from the Triverse. We've had a bit of a diversion for the last few weeks, but today we're back to the main story. And you should know that this is five years later. This chapter is Far, Far Away, Part 1. The Triverse is Mid-Earth, an alternate 1980s London, Max-Earth, a vision of the 26th century, and Palinor, where magic is real. Lower Mercado, series, 2550. If he looked closely, Clark could see the tilt on the surface of the beer, subtle enough that it had to be consciously observed and could be easily dismissed as a drunken illusion. First time here? The bartender leaned towards him, smiling. She was probably in her fifties and attractive, then again, everyone looked younger on Max Earth. Good genes, good health care. He shook his head and lifted the glass so he could watch the liquid from the side. Been here a couple of times. Never had reason to come down this low, though. Lower Mercado was far enough from the docks that the tourists didn't show up. He'd had to take the train down ten levels to get to it. Clark liked the feel of the place. Real people lived there, drank there, linked up, fell out, had fights made something of themselves, got into trouble, and out of it again. It was a marketplace for stories. It's where the locals spent their time. The bartender pointed at the surface of the beer. Coriolis, she said. Her hair was dark brown and wavy, almost unkempt, but without looking messy. Cori what now? Coriolis effect, that's what you're looking at. The rotation speed of series goes up a notch the closer you down. The rotation speed of series goes up a notch, the lower down you go. Lower Mercado is pretty low, which means the rotation starts making everything tilt. You can only really know sit with liquids, though. Makes me feel permanently drunk. She moved a cloth across the bar absentmindedly. So does having half a dozen beers in an hour. Grinning, she poured a glass of water for him. I'm not complaining about the business, but if you're from out of town, you want to watch your metabolism. Hangovers in low gravity, if you're not used to it, can be hellish, so I'm told. She had an American accent, that way of speaking that was so common on Max Earth, but with a slight lilt that betrayed her living in the belt. Clark had developed an ear for this sort of thing, and over the five years he'd been stuck on Max Earth. The bar was in a corner of the market. Smells of a thousand cuisines filled the space. The challenge on series was in choosing. It sometimes felt to him like the centre of the universe. It was a port of call for anyone going in or out of the inner planets, at least when its orbit aligned in a convenient manner. Seasons on Ceres were defined by relative proximity to Mars and Jupiter, rather than the Sun. It was an inside-out and upside-down place that left Clark with the beginnings of a migraine just for thinking about it. He'd read about it on the first trip over, but none of it had stuck in his mind. All he knew was that the city was mostly below ground, and that he was, for some reason, standing on the ceiling. If you don't mind, Clark said, and before I get too drunk, can I ask you some questions? As long as the first one is, can I buy you a drink? Sure. She smiled, perfect teeth, like everyone else there. Okay, why not? Help yourself. She poured something dark and red into a shot glass, looking at him rather than what she was doing. Actually, one question from me first. It's not just that you're from out of town, is it? You're a mid-earther, am I right? He nodded. What gives it away? Is it the crooked teeth? Among other things, she said, not unkindly. She raised her glass. I'm Shannon. Pleased to meet you. Clark, Yannick Clark, used to be a detective. For a time he'd gone under an alias, but that didn't seem necessary. They'd all gone their separate ways, had kept on the move but truth was that nobody was looking for them anymore. Nobody cared. They weren't important. Now I've gone private. Hence, questions. She downed her drink, then poured another. Clark wondered if he was going to be paying for that one as well. Sounds exciting. Go on then, Detective Clark. Interrogate me. After finishing the last of his beer, he slid the empty glass towards her, then pulled a photo from his jacket pocket. This kid, he said, went missing a month back. Cough goes by the name Pacan. Their family hired me to find out what happened and bring them home. You want another? Clark nodded. 
recognize the face? She picked up the photo and examined it. To be honest, I'm not being racist here, but I struggle to tell Koth apart. It's my fault, you just don't see that many of them this far from home. Waving the photo, she grinned at him. Also this? A paper printout? Really? Old habits, Clark said, watching as she pulled the pump. The ale was pretty good. Brewed on Ceres, apparently. You do know we have computers. Yeah, but I like having something physical. Jogs the memory in a way a screen doesn't seem to. Or maybe I'm just an old, washed-up mid-earther. She handed him the fresh beer. Could be a bit of both. Thanks. He took the photo back, his fingers touching hers briefly. Not ringing any bells, then? I don't know. Maybe? She leaned on the bar, her face closer to his. I have seen more Koth coming through series over the last, what, six months? No idea where they're going or what they're doing. I couldn't say if he was one of them or not. Time was an imposed convenience on Ceres, where there was no natural sunlight in the halls and caverns that had been carved into the asteroid. The artificial rotation bore no relation to a day, so the lights within shifted slowly through the spectrum as the hours passed in a rough simulation of Earth time. It meant that Clark kept losing track of whether it was morning or evening. Oh, it would have been too easy, he said. Probably, but you got to meet me, so it's not a total bust. Plus, I can ask around. There are particular shops and community centres that Koth tend to hang out. Have you asked there? Clark nodded. I did on the upper levels without much success. They pointed me in this direction. I haven't been on Lower Mercado for long. Her head tilted slightly to one side. You here alone? Yeah, he said, sighing quietly to himself. Yeah, I am. It had been that way for some time. Kaminsky and Chakraborty were off doing their own thing, and the last he'd heard from them had been from Max Earth's Addis. Nobody knew where Holland had ended up after he'd embarked on his grand tour of the solar system, on the hunt for the most exotic ways to spend his money, as usual. Clark had carried on for a while with Justin, trying to fight the good fight, but eventually he'd had to admit to being beaten. I thought great detectives had to have partners. Where's your Dr. Watson? There were so many cultural touch points that went entirely over Clark's head that he'd developed a particular combination of smiling and shrugging to deal with it, a non-committal response that evaded having to acknowledge his ignorance. I don't have much luck with partners, he said. Maybe picking up on his answer, Shannon didn't probe any further, which was just as well. Clark wasn't in the mood for going over bad history. Some days he struggled to remember John Callahan's face, Lola Stiles' face. His life was a mess, but at least it wasn't as messy as those of his clients. That was the benefit of working private cases. There was always someone in a worse situation than him who was willing to pay to get themselves out of it. Or, in this case, to get someone else out of it. Clark looked at the photo again. Pecan had red and green filaments on their horns, and a wry expression on their face, almost a mischievous grin. The family lived on Max Earth, but Pecan had wanted to see the planets before getting a job. Three months into his travels, he'd vanished. The paper trail had led Clark to Ceres. I've got other customers to serve, Shannon said, clearly bored with the conversation. But I get off in an hour, if you're still in the area, come find me. I know a great noodle bar. Perhaps not bored, then. Unsure of what was on offer, Clark nodded and tried to react as if attractive women invited him out all the time. That sounds good, he says. I know it does, she said, winking. And then in the morning maybe we can go ask around about your missing dragon. She turned and moved to the other end of the bar, where more punters were waiting. Ceres always brought the unexpected. It kept life interesting. It was a good place to forget about yourself, Clark always thought. In the morning she'd said. He checked his watch needlessly, as the shops never closed on series. He needed to buy some mints. Thanks for listening. You can find behind-the-scenes notes and leave comments over on the newsletter version of this at simonkjones.substack.com.